And I'm just finishing it up today. I'm just gonna add a couple of details. Was working with the team at Banton Frameworks, got some feedback, super helpful. So I just wanna point out a couple of things here. If you wanna catch the full stream and get the full screen, if you're watching on Instagram, definitely hit up youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. You can also catch the replay there as well because you can't really see on the screen here very well. So a um, couple things, I was kind of messing around with the bridge piece here. Um, if I were rendering this, I would probably take a little bit more time to <clears throat> work out the fillets and so forth. But actually, as it turns out, talking with the team, we don't need, let's see, let me roll to the end here. Close this up. We don't need these fillets on the end. So I'm just gonna select those and delete. We're using Fusion 360 today. And uh, this separation here, this piece is actually going to be all one body, the same thing. So my understanding is this will actually cut all the way through. We'll see um, how that ends up. So just for my 3D printing purposes, I'm going to eliminate this feature, where is it? Right here. So let's go and find it. Okay, let me go back before the mirror. I'm trying to remember this, this file order um, as well. So I'm using Fusion 360. We are working from some of these quick thumbnails um, that I'd done before for you guys on the YouTube right here, just working from these thumbnails, okay? And trying to just make sure I capture some of these details and things that um, are part of the glasses. So I think ultimately they are gonna look more like this. Um, I just need to figure out the backside transition, but they'll kind of help with that, so I'm not terribly worried. And then the other thing is they do have these studs for their hinges, so I'm gonna try and add Maybe a little detail there, but I do like the protruding. And I think we, I think we settled on the horn. We're calling it. Um, Jamie at Banton Frameworks called it that today. So just this protruding portion that we kind of modeled up um, on Tuesday, and then the other bit of feedback I got was they're going to be using their own hinges, but for my purposes, I am going to. Um, just use a piece of copper wire or something like that, drill a hole, shove it in there, and then I'll be able to wear these after they're 3D printed, test the arms and so forth. Okay, so I'm trying to find what feature this is. I don't remember. Usually you can right click and, and find out, but I'm gonna have to play a little bit of, of digging here. Uh, thick, I think it's this one. Let's delete that feature, boom. Okay, so now it's back to one piece. Sorry, YouTubers. Helk, welcome, not Helcom, welcome. Thanks for hanging out. I've got two mice here as well. The sound is very low. Do you mean the audio or like the the voice or the music? The voice or the music, let me know. Um, I'm just listening to uh, my usual playlist on Spotify, in case you're wondering. Welcome David, Elliot, uh, Roshan, what's up? I know, I love the pill too, but um, the feedback I got was that they're not able to do it. So um, I'm gonna cap the ends here with metal though. Um, they, traditionally they use these two pins, but I want this to be kind of just a metal piece. And then I'm just gonna dream for now and uh, face reality once, once these get made. Okay, so just to recap, here's where we are from the last episode, everything is parametric. Um, again, for visualization purposes, I may add some fillets. Voice was low yesterday too. Let's see if we can turn up this gain. All right, is that better? <clears throat> Let me know if that's better. Ah, Arthur's like, is there music? Yeah, there is supposed to be music, but um, just playing around here. If you're watching on Instagram and you wanna see the uh, full screen, just head over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. That's the best place to ask me questions. I'm just broadcasting my, my screen here. There's really no way for me to mirror this onto Instagram. So if you have questions, youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. All right, wasting too much time talking here. Okay, so there's a couple of things I forgot to address. I remember, um, so I'm gonna, roll back before these two fillets and I do want to fillet the arm here. So I'm just gonna pick these two 
And then now I can hit whatever radius I want. So I'm gonna pick five millimeters, see how that looks. I could also construct it with a spline, but I do think that the design here is mostly rational geometry. So I'm trying to uh, maintain that throughout the uh, design so that we have some consistency. Okay, so now I have those fillets and I can roll forward and what should happen is it should break, just kidding. Um, I thought it was gonna pick up this edge, but I think I have to, let's see. Let me get rid of that one, that's trouble. And I'll go ahead and pick, hit that plus sign, pick another edge here and we'll do half a millimeter. And now you can see we have a nice fillet right there, okay? So if you build your surfaces consistently, you can kind of see the continuity there as well. Um, that is, good to see you, Tuan. That is, uh, I don't know, just just something I like to do. If if you have a design that's consistent, build the overall form. It's kind of like when I sketch and I do form, divide, beautify, it's the same thing with 3D. You want to get your big forms in and then divide those and then beautify. Okay, so hit okay here and we got our fillets on the frame back. I'm gonna add, the reason I don't need to add the fillets really is that um, in production, they actually tumble meaning they'll put the glasses in um, some sort of abrasive and then tumble the whole thing. So I don't really need to, but I'm gonna add a couple just for visualization, like I said. Okay, so here, let's add another fillet. Just like that, boom. So now I have my horn sticking out. Um, fillet's got a little bit weird here. If I were actually modeling this, um, I'd probably have to manually figure out because we have one, two, three, four, five surfaces meeting at a point, it gets a little weird. <laughs> if you're if you're used to doing 3D or if you've done 3D in the past, um, that can just be a, a tricky spot. So you have to strategy there. But basically the center piece right through here, in fact, my combine is off, okay. So this whole piece, if I were to assign the appearance, this is going to be some sort of wood. Uh, let's just say maple. Maybe there's a maple in the library here. Appearance library. Yep, there we go. So I can just drag this and let's see. Apply to bodies. Also, thanks for hanging. It was fun last time. Um, I certainly learned a bunch with you guys. I think I just click on it. Let's see. Oh, I need to download it. All right. So I'm going to hit download here into my file. And now let's see. Can I be signed at a face? No, nope, that's not working. All right. Let's see if I can find a wood here. <clears throat> All right. Cool. So, oops. Let's type in wood. They have these 3D textures. I've never actually used a 3D texture before, so that was just a random guess. Um, but I'm just gonna drag this to the body, play with it a little bit. Let's delete this one. So we've got at least some color there to identify. Okay, that's a different part. And on these tips, like I said, I kind of wanted these to be a different material. So, let me think on this one. Um, since I'm 3D printing it, I don't really need to do this, but I'm gonna do the split. Um, I'll do it right before the mirror, and then I'll just have to change it before I actually send it to my 3D printer. But I'll show you guys how I do that um, in a little bit of the setup. My printer is actually running right now. I'm making another part for another project, personal project. But right here, let's do a sketch on this surface. Okay, so I just picked that flat surface. Wants to do a sketch now. Such a weird orientation. Okay, there we go. So now I can draw a line and this line, like I said in the first episode, I like constraints. So it's constrained horizontal, that little icon on the bottom says that it's horizontal. Um, questions about what program uh, this is. This is Fusion 360 and I'm just making a mock-up so I'm not, like even here, this transition is terrible, but um, I'm not terribly concerned about it right now. But let's see, okay, back to this guy. Um, let's go ahead and dimension. 
So trying to find a point on the model here I can pull from, it's not letting me do it. So sometimes you do have to add like a reference point. Okay, so here on this intersection, click there. And just to make sure we are absolutely coincident, I'm gonna pick these two and hit coincident. Is that not working? It's a weird model, so. I don't exactly remember all the things I did. Okay, there we go. So now we're coincident, which means this point, no matter where I drag it, it won't leave this line. <clears throat> and that's important because now I can control how far this line is from the other line. So again, that's why I like constraints. So I'm going to deselect everything, pick this line, hit construction. So construction lines don't factor in. And now I can make a surface, right? Um, I can also dimension and say, hey, you know, if this is a piece of metal capping, if this is a piece of metal capping my design, how much do I want that? I've got my calipers again, um, super handy if you're working in 3D and you, you just want a visual reference. It's a great way to do it. Another thing I want to show you guys is a few years ago, I made this tool and I, I worked on it with a friend of mine, Johnny Jensen another guy, Thomas Bender, but it's it's basically a handy CAD referencing tool um, that we launched on. I don't think we, no, we didn't launch this one on Kickstarter, but um, we had intended to. And so it's just a quick visual reference for, hey, what does a one millimeter depth look like or three quarter millimeters, um, half a millimeter and so forth. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll bring this back. I don't know. Um, it also has references, just a quick visual check for hole sizes as well, radii, this is I think one inch on the outside. Um, there's a two millimeter chamfer. So if you wonder what a two millimeter chamfer looks like and you have this, it's a pretty good reference. You can just look at this and go, okay, two millimeters, perfect. Here's my depth, awesome. Um, it's missing a couple things like it needs, I think it needs the reverse of what one millimeter is. But looking at this, I'm gonna go with, let's see, one and I'll go with one and a half for my metal. So again, just a nice tool right there for the Instagram, right there for the YouTubers. Um, a nice tool to have if you're modeling. Henry Roa is asking thoughts on Mac versus PC for CAD. I like Macs regardless of what I'm doing. So if I can figure out a way to do CAD on a Mac, I will do it on a Mac always. Um, and that's, that's just my personal preference, but Ultimately, and this goes for sketching, um, it's been an interesting week, lots of uh, discussion, healthy debate about process and best practices. I think ultimately, um, we all do things differently. We can critique each other's uh, means of doing things, but ultimately, however you do it, it's the way you do it. Um, if you're gonna work with someone, if they like the way you work, that's cool. Doesn't matter really what I think. What really matters is how you work, what works for you. Okay, I'm going to switch this to two sides because symmetric's just kind of awkward. But I basically just want a plane here to separate these these two, okay? Um, so I'm going to hit, let's see, hit OK. So I've got a surface plane here, and now I can insert a command, modify. Actually, it's right there, split body. It's going to ask, okay, what do you want to split? I'm going to split this guy and I'm gonna use this plane as my tool. I don't wanna extend the splitting tool. Explen extend the splitting tool, as I discovered, actually projects it all the way out. So you see how that's now trying to slice through the front of the frame. But if we look at the top plane here, I don't wanna slice off my bridge piece, okay? That, that would not be um, comfortable or convenient in any sense or by any means. So, if you deselect that, it isolates it just to that region. I can hit okay. Hopefully don't crash. All right, Fusion just had some updates. Um, this is a cloud-based modeling tool, which is another way, another reason I like it. I can open my files on my Mac Pro over here, or I can open them on my MacBook, and I don't have to worry about storing my files in a specific place. So that's super convenient and another reason I like um, using the product. Okay, let me actually delete this. Do I wanna delete that? Yeah, I can delete this fillet, I think. Oh wait, no, I tried to delete the face. So 
Let's see where this is. Okay. Cool thing about Fusion as well. So you have this timeline on the bottom. It's kind of like a play-by-play uh, -play of the whole model. So if I wanted to go back to the early stage of the model, I can just roll this all the way back and you'll see, hey, I actually started out with two planes <laughs> like this to establish the main geometry. And we can hit play and it'll just go through the whole model and you'll see, let's see, there we go. Or is it playing up to that point? Yeah, that's right. It plays up to the point. So now if I hit play, it'll start from the beginning. You can see the sketch. Here's all the surfaces I built, right? All the process, cutting things away, turning things off, building the arm and so forth. So pretty powerful. If you want to scroll back, make some changes, you can always do that in the timeline. And it's pretty easy and powerful to do. Um, if you're used to working in something like Rhino or uh, Alias or a non-parametric modeling tool, you'll know the frustration of, you know, hey, I made this miscalculation. Now I got to go back and rebuild. So you do a lot of rebuilding if you're not working parametrically. Um, but like I was saying here, if I want to identify what this fillet is on the, t on the timeline, if I click on it, it's right there. So I know that's the feature. So I can delete this and my model remains intact, even though I was working after that point in time. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'll propose this to them. Maybe it's just a solid metal cap instead of studs for the arms or frames. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it ends up. But that's the beauty of, I think, design is you have a chance to work in tandem, hand in hand with manufacturers um, to make your ideas become reality. So I'm going to play with a few fillet options here and see if I can come out with something good. This will probably be a shorter stream too. I thought it was going to take after the feedback from the team there, I realized, oh, we're actually pretty close to, um, pretty close to getting something, right? So I'm going to pick this edge as well, do a half a millimeter, and then I'll pick this edge if it'll let me. Okay, it's not letting me pick that edge, so I'm gonna pick it independently and do half a millimeter, boom. Okay, so close enough. I can always massage that. You know, again, it's just for visual purposes at this point and conceptualizing the idea, but maybe something like that, okay? So we've got the, the inlay piece that they're suggesting putting in. What I'm not entirely sure about is if part, if the frame will be interrupted like that and they're just gonna glue it together and machine it or, if um, this needs to stop here. That's what I'm not sure about, but I'll find out soon enough. Not a big deal. Okay. So here on the model, I have some options. I can either try and um, model this in by hand, or I can go measure some copper wire, like I said, or a screw and see if I can get that in place. I could clamp it, which seems a little bit uh, difficult. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab a quick piece of copper wire and I'll be right back. All right. So I got my wire here. Boom. I've been working on an electrical related project as well. So got some wire. I can just cut a piece off since I don't need to work with the whole thing. So let's just cut a little piece off. So what I'm envisioning anyways for this prototype is just taking, uh, taking a piece of this wire and shoving it into the arm of the frame. This wire right here, if you're on Instagram. Um, so I figure that's easier than me having, sub Tom, me having to, you know, drill a hole, find a screw, all of that stuff. So what I'll do here, I've got my calipers on, set to millimeters. So I can just measure the diameter. I wish I had a micrometer, but I don't. Um, so I'll just get the rough diameter. It's about 1.62. If I just rotate this around, 1.63. Um, because the 3D printing process, it tends to have things shrink a little bit. You know, you have this hot plastic that goes out at dimension and then things shrink a little bit. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So I'll go with like 1.65. I'm not sure of the actual percentage of um, shrinkage that'll happen after the process, but certainly with manufacturing plastic parts, it's a real thing that happens um, and something you wanna be aware of. So right here on the hinge portion, uh, and I didn't, I didn't set this up for articulation. We can mess around with it a little bit today 
and C. Let's see, I'm gonna try and pull off this circle. And usually what you can do, so let's say I have a circle here and this is a round edge. Assuming this is not a curvature um, continuous fillet, official JCH says, love a bit of fusion. Nice, I'm, I'm enjoying it too. It's been, uh, it's been a learning process for sure. And so thanks for hanging out with me while I learn a little bit. All right. So now that I have these two selected, I can hit not equal, <laughs> stake. So pick the round, pick the circle, and we want to do a concentric. So this is basically the center of rotation for this arm. Okay. Now if I want to move this in a bit, I can. And the way to do that would be, and this, again, this is all by estimation, <laughs> but what I could do, let's see. Yeah, I wanna finish this sketch. But what I could do here is modify this feature. So if I hit edit feature and let's see, I think we were, see which edge this was, 2.5. So if I went with like one, nope, not that edge. It's this feature, edit feature. Probably this one, let's let's test it and see. There we go, one. So if I move this, it's gonna move that circle in, right? So if I go two, that might lead to a more balanced look once I hit okay. And there you see, this looks more centered now, okay? So it's such a small um, area that I'm not terribly concerned. I've got a little warning here. So let's, let's check out what this is saying. Review warning, stitch body is invalid. Okay, edit feature here. I like to make sure everything's good. Um, I was trying to stitch. Oh, I don't even need. I don't even need that now. So I'm gonna delete this stitch. It's not a factor. Okay. Um, is this an offset? Okay. I don't need these three. So I'm gonna delete these. And let's delete my extrude surface here. Maybe. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. But you can see that the pin is now more central, and this radius, while not the same gives, uh, you know, it's, it's related. It's close enough related. I'm just making up an arm, but again, they're gonna probably chop this section out and replace it with their own thing. Okay, so back to the sketch, let's go to edit sketch. If you're watching on Instagram and you wanna catch the full like screen share with everything, cameras and all that, um, head on over to slash sketchaday.com and you'll get to see that. All right, so we got picture in picture going. My apologies there. All right, so this diameter, like I said, I pulled from the uh, piece of copper wire that I cut, which is about 1.61. I'm gonna make that 1.65. If I need to, if I need to open that up a bit, shouldn't be too hard. I have drill bits, so I'll do one point. I'll just do 1.7. Okay, let's just do 1.7. So for my diameter. I'm gonna have 1.7. So that's gonna be my copper stud that I put into um, this 3D printed part. I'll probably 3D print it in black plastic as well. I think that would be, that'd be good and nice, uh, nice look. So now I can do an extrude and I'm gonna pick this profile. And with Fusion, what happens is instead of having extrude cut and extrude, you just have extrude. <laughs> and you can actually just do join, cut, intersect, new body, new component, like all of it's right there. That took a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's really, really nice. So I can hit cut, tap this arrow, drag it through, and you'll see that you get a preview of what's gonna happen. Hit okay, and now I have a hole that I can put my copper in, I can epoxy it in place or whatever I need to do um, to make that, that sit, okay? So now I've got my hole. It's like, all right, if I want, even if I want to model the copper pin in, I can do that. So let's go ahead and do that. We can even color it copper just for uh, the sake of this. I can pick open shapes and profiles from the model as well in the sketch. So here, if I hit offset, pick this edge and say negative 0.1, just for um, clearance, or I could even do 0.05. I'll just do negative 0.1. That should give me enough of a, actually I do want a tight fit. So I'm gonna do 0.05. Not that negative point, oh, two, two points in there. Delete one of those. Okay, so if I hit okay now and then go to, please don't crash. I'm gonna save this. 
<laughs> I'll save a version. Fusion does automatically save once you make your first save. It stores it in your library. Your library is right here in your data panel. Um, that's where you have all your CAD, CAM, manufacturing, all that stuff. I'll be doing a few more streams in the future where I show you how to program a CNC router or machine and how to set that up. I've um, been working with the Fusion guys to do that at home here as well. Okay, so I've got my shape and now I can hit extrude and let's pick this profile right there. And again, you'll see that it's highlighted. So I have the option now to extrude wherever I want. And so just rotating the model around, I'm gonna pick a different command here. Normally you can just put a distance in. So I could say, you know, I want this to be 20 millimeters or rather let's do, there's a positive negative direction to the way you extrude. So there's a, there's a positive going one way and a negative. I'm not sure exactly how it's calculated yet. I'm still learning. But if I put 20 and you'll see that there's, you know, a bit of overhang. That's like if I took some of this electrical wire and just shoved it all the way through. But I just want it to be neat. So I'm going to hit uh, extent. I'm going to say to object and I can pick this plane. For example, I could pick an edge. But since this is a planar face, it works just fine. Make sure the operation says new body and hit OK. And now I have a new body in my tree here. If you want to stay organized, you can also do, let's see, rename. Maybe if I just click on it. Yeah, if I click on it, I can rename it and we can call this uh, pin. OK, so now it's easy to find that pin. And as far as the appearance goes, let's see if we can find some copper in this library. We're not we're not jumping into key shot just yet. I'll leave that for Roshan. Maybe he wants to maybe he wants to. Uh, Maybe he wants to model this up for me. If you don't know who he is, check him out on, on the Insta. And since we're going with copper, which is kind of cool, maybe I'll just go with copper for this tip. That's pretty, pretty sweet. Okay, and then let's close our appearance panel. This is that extrude feature, I believe. And I don't think I need it, so I'm gonna delete it. See if, see what I break. Okay, the only thing that broke, I think, is the mirror feature. So now I've got my copper, I've got my acetate arm. Um, let's go ahead and make that black as well. So I'm gonna search for some plastic just for a quick visualization here. And let's see, plastic, glossy black. We could do a glossy black, matte black. Uh, let's see how matte black looks. I like the matte black. I need like a semi-gloss though, let's see. You can do textured plastic, it looks like, but I have to download that and we all know what happened last time. Okay, I'm gonna go with the glossy black just since it's uh, you know in in app visualization here. We're not jumping in a rendering package. Um, let's delete this matte black and let's see. I don't I don't want it to be pure black, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. Okay, done. Alright. Thanks, DJ Designs. Thumbs up to you too. All right, so there's there's the half of my um, pair of glasses. If I wanna put the lens in, let me think on how I wanna do that actually. Oops, sorry. This is Fusion 360 in case you're wondering. All right, so here I think what I'm gonna do, um, I need to get, I need to get some round lenses in. Okay, I'm not gonna be 3D printing the lenses, but I just wanna put them in. So I'm not going to put the, yeah, this is Fusion 360. I'm not going to put, uh, you know, all the other stuff in there. So I want some reference geometry. So I'm going to construct an axis through a cylinder and this should work. There we go. So there's our axis. It's now showing up. Hit OK. Now I can pick this reference geometry and let's see, I want to do, let me think on this. Uh, I do want a plane at that axis. So I'm going to insert, oh wait, no, construct an offset plane. Is it just offset? No, not offset. Let's see what kind of planes we have. Plane through, uh, we could do a tangent plane, tangent to a cylindrical cone or face, not that one. Um, plane tangent to face at point, nope. Plane along a path. Normal to an edge or sketch profile. Let's see if that works. Um, so I'm gonna pick. Yeah, it's not letting me not letting me pick this axis. So let me see what options we have here. If one of you guys knows, let me know. Um, I'm still learning as well. So uh, maybe it's a plane through. 
Okay, let me think on this real quick. It's weird you can't do like a coincident plane. Midpoint between two faces or work planes. All right, let's try this. So I can pick my axis, but I need to pick another line. So I'm trying to think of how I will do that. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Aoko Designs. Uh, playing through, you know, people always ask me, do you just draw pictures or do you design? I actually do designs. <laughs> I am a designer, as it turns out. Um, okay, playing at an angle, playing through an edge. Ah, okay. So I can click on that, boom, there we go. At zero degrees, it assumes. So that's the command, playing at an angle. Yes, Fusion right now is my primary CAD software. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm bootstrapping a startup here. So, ooh, actually this is interesting. Um, if I do a revolve, that's gonna be wrong. So I need to actually create some reference geometry. So let's go ahead and it's gonna be wrong because if you look at this lens, right, it's at a slight angle, like so. I'm just gonna guesstimate. We're gonna move fast here, since it's just for visualization, but something like that. So this needs to be my center of rotation, okay? So if that's my center of rotation, um, let's go ahead and do, um, let's do a section view. So if you don't know what a section view, it's like taking a laser knife and cutting through an object. So I hit section analysis. I can pick a plane, like this top plane, and now, actually, I shouldn't pick the top plane. Let's go ahead and pick uh, under my reference geometry, let's see, construction in my tree here. I'm gonna pick this plane. So it's cutting everything through that, and I can hit OK. And now my model, you see these pink areas, that's, that's what's called a section. So that's what the model looks like through those points. Let's take a look at the top here. And now you can see what I was kind of talking about, okay? So I'm just gonna pick this angle and now I'm going to draw a curve. So let's create, let me think on this. Yeah, let's draw a curve. So I'll do a, th uh, do I wanna do, yeah, I'll do a three, mm, yeah, I'll do a three point arc. We'll do this the hard way. I'm, I'm a creature of habit, so. <laughs> So I'm just gonna pick a point here, depending on how far out I want this to stick. You know, maybe it protrudes a little bit. Actually, let me take a look at my glasses here. It looks like they don't protrude too much. If I'm, I'm just looking at these as reference, they don't protrude too much further. These actually have very flat lenses um, as an example. So here you go. These are pretty flat for you YouTubers. Um, some glasses stick out a little bit more, but I'm gonna have these just go almost tangent. Um, someone's asking if I can do a simulation. I can show you a little bit. I'm still learning the simulation stuff, but it is pretty fun to be able to visualize your model um, being manufactured. So I can show you a little bit of that once we get to sending it to my, my printer here. So I need a line to make sure that this surface or um, shape I'm creating is going to be tangent across this mirror plane. So this is the mirror plane right in the middle. That that uh, orange dotted line is my middle mirror plane. And so here at this point, I'm going to click and draw a line. Now this line is meant to be construction. So let's go ahead and pick that, hit the construction button. And now if I pick these two curves like so, I can hit tangent and now they're tangent. Okay. So there's my central axis of rotation roughly in the center. Not exactly perfect. I could figure out the midpoint here. Um, if I were to draw, yeah, I could figure out the midpoint, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> it's too much work right now. <laughs> so let's do a test and see if we can do a um, revolve here. So if I hit surface, revolve, pick this curve, and my, let's see, so I pick the profile, and now the axis I want to pick is that line. Okay, hit okay and I have a lens. Now, if I wanna turn off the section view under my analysis in my feature tree here, I turn that invisible and now I have a lens. 
And as far as the appearance of that goes, you know, I can thicken it up. Lenses have thickness. So let's go to solid, create, thicken. So it's gonna take the surface and thicken it up. And I'll just do 0.3 millimeters or something. Um, but I want that to be negative. I'm not gonna actually pop the lens out here. This actually feels thicker. So I'm gonna do like uh, one. I'll do one millimeter. All right. So I'll do one. Make sure it's negative one so the arrow's flipped. Uh, make sure this says new body, hit OK. And now I have a lens. And I can pick a material for this lens. So I can make it transparent, translucent if I want. So let's see if we have uh, translucent. Misspelled that. Translu. Okay. So we got plastic, translucent white. Um, maybe we'll do transparent. See what they have here. This is Autodesk Fusion 360. This is not a sponsored <laughs> post by any means. Um, I was criticized this week for commercializing everything, so <laughs> people are interesting. Um, let's try. Let's try uh, gray glass. Let's try that. So I'll just drag and drop this, and now we have some translucency. You can even see there's a little light in the scene. I haven't played with rendering in Fusion either, um, but if we double click on this, we should have some options um, limited somewhat. Let's see, advanced highlight controls. Can I, I haven't messed with this much at all. So um, this is just based on prior experience with apps like this. Uh, let's see, render settings, environments. Oh, we can pick different environments, that's cool. Um, I do want to, I do want to change the translucency though. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Okay. Uh, refractive index, absorption, distance, roughness. These don't seem to help, but I'll just leave it for now. Maybe if I adjust the color. Okay. So adjusting the color kind of helps, um, helps a little bit. I'm an industrial designer. I am I am an industrial designer. That's what I do. Okay, so we've got our little copper tip there. Um, we've got our little metal end, which I like. We've got our wood bridge, faux wood bridge, and we've got our lens in place. I think there were some fillets I wanted to refine a bit. So let's get out of this appearance thing. I close because my model is being weird. All right, there we go. So just some stuff on the backside. Um, Just some stuff on the backside here I wanted to look at. I don't know why my zoom is being weird as well. So let's see. All right, it's just taking a lot of mouse scrolls to get there. <laughs> All right, so just on this face on the back edge here, um, if I actually click on this fillet and I go edit feature, I can add to the feature. So it's all in just one, just keeps it a little tidier for me. So I'll do 0.5. See what that looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the edges I want. Let's do plus. And I'm gonna pick my edges here. I have three. Let's pick this one and the inside like so. I do realize I forgot to model one thing in, so and I think I need to do that first. So let me actually cancel this. The other thing I need to model is a surface for my nose bridge, okay? So let's try this a couple ways. Um, my thought is if I just take this surface and I um, create an offset, so let's do a surface, uh, create offset, okay? If the distance is set to zero, it's just gonna copy it, hit okay. And in my construction here, let's go ahead and turn off some stuff so it makes it a little easier to see what's happening. I work for myself right now, I'm a consultant. Consultant, educator, influencer, you might say. All right, by default. Um, let's pick, I don't wanna pick the whole body, but it's letting, it's making me do that. All right, it's fine. It's not a huge deal, I think. Yeah, it's not a huge deal, because I can pick this edge now, and what I wanna do is extend this edge. Let's see if, yeah, it lets me do it, cool. So now I've extended this edge. So I have a couple options. I can either extend that shape or I can use it as a rail on something like a sweep. And I already have this surface. So I'm just gonna pick this surface and create a sketch. 
sorry, sketch on this surface. And what I'm trying to create here, guys, just so you see, on a pair of glasses, you have these subtle tabs, right? And these tabs are meant to just help the glasses rest on your face comfortably. These tabs right here. Yeah, there you can see them right there. So help helps, uh, helps your glasses rest on your face comfortably. So let's go ahead and sketch a curve, right? Subtle curve, something like that. And I want this to be definitely coincident with this point, which we are. Check, check, check. I also want this to be tangent. Looks like it's tangent already. <clears throat> so now what I can do is I can create a sweep and then cut from that sweep, okay? So let's create a surface. Uh, let's see. Sweep. I'm gonna pick my profile, which is that guy. And I'm gonna pick my path, which is that guy. Whoa, it's picking the whole thing. Uh, let's see, I don't wanna do chain selection. I think maybe that's the problem. So let's pick, boom, okay. So chain selection was selected, which means it tries to follow the entire model, anything that's tangently, tangent, uh, what's the word, tangent continuous. <laughs> it tries to pick the whole thing. And so it was freaking out on me. All right, so orientation perpendicular is fine. I'm not gonna mess with that. You can do taper, twist. Uh, I'm gonna, let's see, do I want new body? I think this will work. So I'm just gonna hit new body, all right? So I could even I could even hide this if I want, all right? That's just a separate piece. If you're joining on Instagram and you want the full screen share, head on over to sketchaday.com on YouTube. Okay, so the right plane, let's see. I need to create a sketch and I'm gonna do it on this plane now. So now I'm gonna design the shape, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna design the shape of this nose piece. All right, it's not something I really sketched out, but again, given the primitive kind of appearance of these shades, I'm gonna keep the design fairly simple. All right, now I have no idea how this is gonna feel on my face. So the best thing I can probably do here is measure. Okay, measure twice, cut once, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna just take a quick visual check measure. This is about, five and a half, six millimeters. So basically about six millimeters from this corner, I can start to draw. So again, that little box, it's really hard to see, but it's creating a snap if I'm sketching here, creating a snap right at this intersection point. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. We can always uh, modify that later, get our constraints in where we need them to be. I do want, actually, let's do this first. I want a line, or is this not horizontal? Let's zoom in real close and get to this point. Boom, right there. Now I'm gonna zoom out, pan over, and draw my line out. I do want this line, like I said, to be about six millimeters. And now I can create a three-point arc. Okay, so one, two, three. I'm gonna fill it this stuff, so don't worry. Which one is good, Fusion or Rhino? Whatever is good is what's good for you, man. I'm not in the business of telling you how to do stuff. I like it. Well, I shouldn't say not how to do stuff, <laughs> but uh, I do like Fusion quite a bit. All right, now I'm gonna make these two coincident, actually undo that what I want to do what is happening do you ever use um program like different programs and you're used to a certain set of keyboard commands and then you jump into another oh sorry guys um you jump into another <clears throat> and then you're like whoa all these keyboard commands are different that's kind of what I was just going through okay